hard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Canadian Centre for uh, Poly uh, Policy Alternatives, Mr. Blair. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the opportunity to present our recommendations today. The Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives is Canada's leading progressive policy research institute. We produce the research and analysis necessary for policymakers, activists, and everyday Canadians to work towards a more equitable, sustainable, and just future. According to the big business lobby, the most pressing threats to Canada going into 2019 come from uncertainty in our trade relationship and our relative tax competitiveness with the United States and the effects of burdensome regulations on lagging productivity. But are these really the biggest challenges facing Canada today? The reality is this. Canadian economic competitiveness is threatened far less by corporate tax and regulatory changes south of the border than it is by climate change, persistent inequality, and dramatically underfunded public services and social programs. Canada stays a desirable place to do business to the extent we have a healthy, well-educated population, a skilled workforce, a cohesive society, and livable communities. We can improve our competitiveness by continuing to invest in our people and our communities. Let me highlight a few key recommendations from the Alternative Federal Budget, which we released yesterday. First, given the changing nature of work and a fast-evolving economy, this budget needs to make lifelong investments in Canadians to set them up for success. Employment insurance needs a fundamental rethink to address a changing labour market and income inequality. Setting a universal EI entrance requirement of 360 hours makes sense given the prevalence of part-time and precarious work, as does a minimum benefits floor and doubling the length of EI sick leave. Nous avons besoin de nouvel encadrement politique. We need a new policy framework for post-secondary education that expands access to higher education and training by eliminating tuition fees. And we need to correct Canada's relative underinvestment in skilled trades, apprenticeships, and adult education. Competitiveness depends on the resilience of Canadian communities and workers in the face of climate change and stronger action to lower emissions. Canada needs a national decarbonization strategy to meet our Paris Agreement commitments and to future-proof our economy. A strategic investment of a billion dollars in training could ensure a supply of skilled workers for new jobs in the clean economy. And a sustainable infrastructure transformation fund would inject $6 billion into high-speed rail, clean electricity and other key infrastructure. Third. The budget needs to invest in public services which support a high quality of life and a well-functioning economy. Here are two. The last budget's commitment to pharmacare is a historic opportunity. Canada's current multi-payer drug coverage is among the most expensive in the world. Implementing a national universal single-payer pharmacare plan could create annual savings of up to $11.5 billion across the entire economy. La plupart des pays dépensent au moins 1% de leur PNB. Most countries spend at least 1% of GDP on childcare, but Canada trails at 0.3%. No government serious about gender equality or economic growth can stall on this priority. These are just a few examples of how Canada can become a more competitive and healthier society while being at the same time more equitable, but they can't be achieved without revenue. These targets cannot be achieved without uh, funding. Compromise the fiscal health of government. Federal revenues are now at 14.4% of GDP, much lower than the 50-year average of 16.4. That 2% gap represents a loss of $46 billion in 2019 alone. Canada does not have a spending problem. It has a revenue problem. The crackdown on corporate tax evasion and tax dodging must continue, and it is well past time to close expensive tax loopholes that benefit mainly the wealthiest income earners, including the stock option deduction and preferential taxation of capital gains. There are options for Canada, and we can afford to act on them. The choices we make today to tackle inequality, implement universal pharmacare, and act on catastrophic climate change will determine the sustainability of our society and economy for years to come. Thank you. Uh, 